Hello gaming, my name is Nico Wells and today I'm going to be reviewing a retro themed platformer called Super Win The Game! <coughs> Sorry. Super Win The Game was developed by Minor Key Games, also known as David and J. Kyle Pittman. Both of them are veterans of the industry and it was while working in AAA development that this game's predecessor, You Have To Win The Game, was created. You Have To Win The Game takes its inspiration from the 1980s CGA PC era and can actually be picked up for free online, so my too long didn't watch message would be to try this one out as you'll get a good indication of the feel. That said, Super Win the Game is a clear evolution of the concept, shifting into 8-bit and almost mirroring the growth of skill demonstrated in the titles of the time. So firstly, the most apparent aspect of this game has to be the visuals. The most nostalgia inducing thing that I've probably ever seen has to be the CRT simulation that this game employs, which is able to be toggled on and off as well as tweaked depending on how rubbish you remember your TV being. Now, I'll be honest, my relationship with retro titles can only be described as sceptical. Far too many games are less homages to the time and more excuses for the art team. But then titles actually come out that have a reason to exist and I'm forced to keep exploring the genre. Super Win the Game is definitely one of those games. It's similar in this way to the insanely popular Shovel Knight, as both set out to evoke a genuine sense of nostalgia and pay their respects to the 8-bit era, while utilising modern techniques to eliminate the frustrating and incoherent parts that resulted from technological limitations and a less advanced understanding of the medium. However, that's pretty much where the similarities end. While Shovel Knight primarily bases itself off of Mega Man with set instances and pretty direct level design, Super Win the Game feels much more like a classic Zelda with an overworld, dungeons, and a focus on secrets, gaining new items and abilities. On top of its classical inspirations, the platforming reminds me a lot of Super Meat Boy. The platforming you're challenged to do is precise and difficult, but the controls are so responsive that you can only blame yourself. Additionally, checkpoints in the form of bells are frequent enough and the time between death and respawn is so short that very little frustration is caused by your constant failures. A few times, however, it was a little niggling. There's one part where you need to fall down a pit filled with water. The water slows you down, so every time that you die, you respawn at the top and think about whether you really want to have to make that commute down to Spike Town again. I also have a little bit of a personal issue with the moving platforms. There's a number of different types of platforms that might crumble away, drop down, or travel in different directions when you step on them, and they take some time to respawn after you've activated them. Say that you mess up a section and die. Respawning at the bell right next to it is great, but I'm waiting anyway because the platforms haven't showed up yet. This is to the point where it's quicker to leave the room and come back rather than wait for the platforms. It's a minor point but something that started getting to me at the difficult bits. And finally, I'll make a note of the story, which is actually a little dark. It mostly takes place in dream sequences that play with your understanding of the game's conventions and leave a sense of unease as to whether your conception of the world is truly accurate. Without spoiling anything, there's a lot going on that can be missed by just plowing through the game and not completing any side objectives. In summary, Super Win the Game is a title that clearly had a lot of heart and thought put into it. It is up to a professional standard, and it's definitely worth your time if you're into retro-inspired titles. Even if you're not, there's a lot more there than you might expect. I recommend that you check out its predecessor as a risk-free trial, and if you're a fan of that, then the improvements are easily worth the $12.99 they're asking. 